Today, as a diocese and throughout our many parishes in the four counties, we celebrate a mass of giving thanks to God for the gift of human life. One need not be a Catholic to express that intention of gratitude, but one cannot, however, be a Catholic without that sentiment rooted deep in our souls. St. Vincent de Paul, the founder of the religious congregation to which I belong, he explained, nature makes trees put down deep roots before having them bear fruit. He must have been thinking about today's gospel when he wrote that to his confers. Vincent was fond of telling his confers, his sisters, that gratitude is the most important Christian virtue. Long before St. Vincent, Cicero said it. It's the parent of all virtues. The ability to give thanks is an essential skill to learn. And sometimes it has to be learned. It takes humility. And humility, humility consists in recognizing the truth as it is. We are, all of us, we're created by God. And created by God as we are. That's truth. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, the prophet Jeremiah proclaimed. Before you were born, I set you apart for my holy purpose. That is truth. Our creation, our very lives, therefore, are no mistake. They're no accident and admit of no exception. Life is truth. We should give thanks to God for this truth, for this gift of human life. Giving thanks to God for the gift of human life is really the humble disposition, the truth that joins us all together, all of us today in prayer. But you know something, it should be our prayer every day, every day. As Catholics, we are pro-life. How can a Catholic be otherwise? And yet we see in our day people, even some who identify themselves as Catholic, who not only are not pro-life, but who work against that conviction, who vigorously support a contrary position, who tragically seek to make even more restrictive legislation that enables the destruction of life at its most vulnerable and innocent stages in the womb. They try to make that the law of the land. In fact, they have. They have done that 48 years ago. And it's the law here in our state. And I fear the law we hear will become much more comprehensive here in the state of New Jersey. That's why it's important, so important for us to stand up as Catholics and be counted as pro-life. It is not simply one of the many labels that is applied to us. It is, as the bishops of our country have reminded us so truthfully, it is our preeminent priority. But today, I don't wish to focus our attention on those who oppose us, those who labor under the banners of pro-choice or reproductive rights or reproductive freedom as their rationale for advancing a culture of death. Instead, let us all together lift up, lift up the culture of life, lift up our hopes that this culture of life will become a civilization of love in our nation and in our world. A week ago today, we sadly commemorated the 48th anniversary of the fateful Roe v. Wade decision of the Supreme Court. On that day, on last Friday, we celebrated a mass for the legal protection of the unborn, something we all wish 
we did not have to have as our intention. Today, we celebrate a mass giving thanks to God for the gift of human life, and that's an intention we always should have. The saint of the streets of Calcutta, Mother Teresa once reminded us, America, she said, needs no words from me to see how your decision in Roe v. Wade has deformed a great nation. The so-called right to abortion has pitted mothers against their children and women against men. It has shown violence and discord at the heart of the most intimate human relationships. It has aggravated the derogation of the father's role in an increasingly fatherless country. It has portrayed the greatest of gifts, a child, as a competitor, an intrusion, an inconvenience. Mother Teresa had such great insights. Any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love, Mother Teresa continued, but to use violence to get what they want. That is why the greatest destroyer of love and peace is abortion. If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to one another. Today, as we, all of us, join together in this, the greatest of all prayers on the altar, the Eucharist. Let us ask the Lord Jesus, who gave his life for all of us, born and unborn. Let us ask him to give us the grace to protect the innocent always, the most vulnerable in the womb, to encourage their mothers and fathers to let them live, to work with renewed strength to build that culture of life, that civilization of love. And so together, let us give thanks to God, our creator, for the gift of human life.